It's a, it's a pleasure, it's an honor for me to be here uh, today and to talk about uh, artificial intelligence. And I'm very proud to talk about artificial intelligence because um, as a digital transformation minister, I, I always want to say it's never about the technology, it's about what we can do with it. And so that's the first thing. The second thing I want to talk about is that we talk about the challenges of the African continent and Togo faces the same challenges, but at the same time, we were able to use artificial intelligence for the benefits of our citizens. So, um, and, and we did it during the pandemic because during the pandemic, we wanted to, uh, we, we, we created a program to support the informal sector and it was through digital cash transfers. So we built a platform and we said, okay, everybody in uh, areas where we, imp uh, we implemented mobility restriction measures, everybody from the informal sector will receive financial aid. How do you do that while respecting um, a mobility restriction and physical, it was physical distancing at the time. Um, you do that by uh, building a platform and dis distributing mobile cash. So what we did was that the poorest of the Togolese oftentimes don't have smartphone, they have basic phones. So we built a payment platform that used USSD technology, which is short code. So people, we asked people to register onto our platform with their voters' ID. It was voters' IDs because um, these were biometric IDs and we just had elections, right? So the voters' IDs were up to date. So we asked people to register onto the platform with this ID and in less than two minutes, if they were eligible, they received financial aid. And eligibility was based on people's professions and it was just the informal sector and also locations because on the voters' IDs database, you had the voting bureaus, so we had people's neighborhood, okay? And then, um, so that was the first phase. And we spent $24 million, and we were able to pay 800 and, um, 820,000 individuals. Togo has 8 million people, right? And so that was phase one, and few days after launching this program, which was very successful because it was the first time in our history where the government would announce financial aid and you would receive it directly in no time, okay? Because oftentimes you announce it and it takes forever. But few days after launching this program, we started to think saying, we were, it was April 2020 and we did not know how long the pandemic was going to last. Okay, so then we were thinking, okay, we need to become very efficient in prioritizing beneficiaries because we're going to run out of money and, and, and we need to be able to sustain our programs. So we reached out to SEGA, the Center for Effective Global Action in the US, and also to Innovations for Poverty Action, IPA, Esther Duflo, we said, we need to come up with new ways to identify, to prioritize the poorest of the Togolese. How can we do? So we said, okay, do we have the data set in Togo? We didn't have much or we didn't have consistent data. We have maybe three ministries uh, which deals with social protection, but still we did not have consistent data. So we said we are going to use satellite imagery to draw a poverty map of Togo. And through satellite imagery, we were able, we have 400 districts in Togo to uh, rank all of our districts from the poorest to the richest, and for each district to have the range of revenues within this very district. So that was number one. We also reached out to NASA Harvest to have the agricultural and rural map of Togo. So we, we were able to have uh, various layers. So we had the poverty map, we had the rural map, and all this to prepare ourselves for you know, hard times where we would have to prioritize urban areas versus uh, rural areas, uh, the poor. I mean, you, you know, we, we needed to be able to build scenarios. So then we had this map, this poverty map of Togo, and then the next question was, who are the poorest of the Togolese? Is there a way for us to have the, you know, to have a list of poor individuals? We didn't have social registries, right? And the way we did it is that we used an other, uh, another AI algorithm, this time applied to mobile operators' CDRs. And then the machine, I call it the machine, 
pulled out the phone numbers of people that earned less than $1.25 per day. And we texted, the two, uh, we texted these people saying, register onto our platform, we'll send you money. And they did register to the platform. And we were able to send them money with the support of the US NGO, which is Give Directly. Because our processes within government would not have enabled us to distribute cash based on AI algorithms. So I, I really like this story because it's changed a lot of people's lives, but it also was a story that was important for us because the team internally built the payment platform and through collaboration with you know, uh, US researchers, we were able to use artificial intelligence. You know, and it was during a, a, a time of crisis, we did our best. We did also our best to include, you know, privacy, data privacy features. And it was a conversation, you know, between ourselves as to how to improve privacy, how to make sure that what we do is something we can talk about later, because when you do the right things and you apply, you know, the, the right principles, you are able to talk about, the, uh, about them. But, but then the question, so this program, we called it Novici, enabled us to pay out 25% of all Togolese adults. So it's huge for us. But then every time we were thinking about that, we said we did it during the pandemic. How do we scale this up? And how do we ensure that this is going to change the way we design policy for the future? And so we reached out this time to the World Bank saying, we need to change our social protection policies and we need to use more data for social protection. And they said, we can come up with a project and we received $100 million to just transform social protection in Togo and in, with a commitment to use data, to collect data, first of all, consistent data, to also use it for the benefit of social protection. But I also want to talk about training of our citizens because we did mention that it's, it, we have a lack of human resources that can work on artificial intelligence, both on the technical side and on the policy side. And again, it's through collaboration that we want to, to make this happen. So we reached out to data.org and uh, things are progressing. <laughs> things are progressing to create what we call em embedded labs because governments tend to believe other governments' entities. So we said, okay, why, why not create within the Ministry of Digital Transformation an embedded lab working again in partnerships with SEGA, with data.org, with others, where we could hire and train local talent, but at the same time working in partnerships with other, you know, with, with uh, outside expertise. And then apply what we do to real life issues. For example, we were talking about deforestation. We were talking about one, uh, another example. This time we were working with uh, Google.org. We wanted to build um, fiber itineraries. So we reached out through satellite imagery. We had the footprints of buildings. We had um, electrical um, um, distribution, do you say? And we were able to design the itineraries just using, you know, again, satellite imagery and so on. So, um, what we think is that it's not about the technology, it's about the problems that you are trying to solve. And so as a, an, an embedded cell within the ministry, we should act as um, a consultant to the rest of the government. If you have a problem that we can use technology to solve, it's for us to come up with an easy answer that you can actually uh, use to inform your decision making. So that's where we are today in terms of uh, using AI in, uh, in Togo. Thank you very much. <laughs>